I am with Fritz Wrench. Fritz is the chairman and the CEO of Racing Industries. And Fritz, it's always great to have you on here. It's always very interesting. Ah, great to be back. It's been a while. It has been. And I also want to ask you some political questions before this is over. I should mention that. Uh, I was afraid. I was afraid <laughs> you're going to. I'm, I'm trying to get out of this political business, Dave. Well, let's keep it trying. And, okay. And, and I should say that Fritz was a founding member of the Heritage Foundation. He's still on the board and has been a mover and a shaker around uh, Washington for quite some years and is always a great person to ask some of these political questions, which we will get to before this is over. Okay. Um, first, uh, let's talk about host and the cleaning system and sort of cleaning in the carpet industry in general. Talk about the host system and how it really differs from the other systems that are out there. It's really quite different. I think the new host, I guess you'd have to call it, the new host technology, which is a combination of the new extractor vac technology, and what that is, is a combination, simultaneous combination of pile lifting, power pile lifting, and 134 cubic feet per minute air movement vacuuming. And the simultaneous aspect is, is what is new. And the significance is this. Because of the pile lifting combination, while you're vacuuming, you get deep cleaning without having to use chemicals. And you say, well, wait a minute, you got upright vacuums for that. Yes, but uh, anybody who runs tests uh, uh, sees the, uh, that the, 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 this technology of the simultaneous pile lifting and vacuuming is probably three times more effective or even more than that than, than your best uh, commercial upright vacuuming. And so this enables you to get deep cleaning either in the daily maintenance mode of your maintenance plan, or in restoration, such as things we're working on now in Dalton. So the interval at which one cleans carpet seems to be really key. It seems like host is a day in, day out kind of system. Hot water extraction, for example, seems to be something obviously on a once or twice a year sort of a method, so I guess even though you vacuum, the carpet gets dirtier and wears out a good deal in between cleanings. Would that be anywhere near accurate? Yes, that's, that's exactly what happens. And, and uh, I hate to always seem parochially host. Uh, it's the technology, the simultaneous piloting and vacuuming, along with the dry extraction sponges, which means you're controlling the liquid enables you to do this, in effect, restoration cleaning or deep cleaning as part of your everyday maintenance program and also as part of restoration. Whereas on the wet side, and this is not parochial, just the technology, when you're wet extracting, for example, uh, you can't do that. You, you, can't, you can't do the wet extracting on a daily basis for a number of reasons. It's just not practical. I suppose the people who would come closest to be maybe doing it would be the Bain Clean people who uh, use the least uh, water flow per minute of, of all the wet cleaning technologies. But it's the dry extraction technology that has made this breakthrough of being able to deep clean on a daily maintenance basis. And that's going to change, eventually change the industry. I see. Um now, you had mentioned the new, the new host, and I guess the host from years ago is quite different than the host of today. Talk about that. Well, yes, uh, both the mechanical application is entirely different with the uh, pile lifting, simultaneous pile lifting and, and uh, brushing and vacuuming. 
and then also on the chemical side, uh, for example, uh, in, in order to uh, meet the new green seal standards of a couple of years ago, uh, there are no longer, uh, there are no VOCs in how we call it, dry cleaning, you think, well, you know, uh, solvents and things, no, no, no more VOCs in host. And the carrier is, is changed, and there are two variations, and uh, the, the, the product and its efficacy are uh, leagues different from what they were even five years ago. I see, I see. Now, I've heard recently the term interim cleaning uh, as a classification for I guess, dry cleaning methods such as the host. What, what's that category all about, and is that a, a category that you subscribe to? That has some, some semantics involved with uh, the term interim. And it's really, it's used in two ways. Uh, in the interim category, you have, uh, let's say, low moisture cleaning methods. <coughs> And so, in the wet cleaning context, the wet extraction context, you have a three-phase maintenance matrix, you might say. Uh, uh, you've got uh, routine maintenance, that's the, the vacuuming. You have this interim cleaning in soil-prone areas, and you have then restoration. But the assumption is that with the interim methods, you're not removing enough of the soil or the cleaning chemicals so that eventually it has to be, quotes, restored by either wet extraction or dry extraction. That's the efficacy part of interim. The other part of the somatic interim is time. That's between the routine and the restoration. Dry extraction since it, it can be used in between a uh, regular maintenance uh, program and a restoration of carpet that's been neglected or allowed to become already soiled. So it's a time factor. And dry extraction, uh, uh, therefore, it, 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 in the way of timing and its planning, fits as interim, but technically, uh, it's different because you are deep cleaning with dry extraction, whereas the uh, when people on the wet cleaning, uh, wet extraction uh, side talk about interim, they're talking about limitations on efficacy of those systems. Uh, they don't say that, and that's that's okay. But uh, and that's where dry extraction uh, differs because you have the deep cleaning efficacy, regardless of when you do the cleaning. And in soil prone areas or wall to wall. And with carpet, the key is to focus uh, deep cleaning maintenance on the soil prone areas so that, in essence, you may never have to clean wall to wall. Well, that's why interim doesn't seem to be a very descriptive word. No, it's, it's, it's unfortunate in, in, in the recent uh, deliberations uh, with IICRC S100 standard, the ANSI standard that IICRC withdrew. And so uh, we're part of the committee uh, that's been reviewing it for a year now. And just we finished the basic writing. Well, uh, I counseled during the. the, 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 the appropriate phase of those discussions that we change from the term interim and, and, and to escape the semantic variations, the tricky language. And um, I guess I didn't, I didn't sell that idea. I, I didn't have well, enough uh, yeah. replacement. So what we're talking about now is we, we say restoration, for example, restoration overall or in soil prone areas. So now you can take that soil prone and uh, area and when you do deep cleaning, 
on an interim basis, which means in between uh, yeah. the wet cleaning expectations of having eventually to restore, uh, and we say, no, 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 you, you don't have to let your carpet get that way, so it has to be yeah. restored. So therefore, interim isn't a very descriptive word. It's the, difficult, yeah. but yeah. It, it's, it's, it's... Well, but it's there, and uh, yeah. difficult to understand, it seems to me. I mean, well, I won't get into... Well, it's, it, 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 if, if one pauses to think about it, maybe people, if, if they don't pause, we're okay. But if they pause, they'll realize that interim, the, the, the interim concept, <clears throat> basically has been the uh, uh, key to the assumption that carpet cannot be maintained. The carpet grads it can be kept from getting trashed for a while, but eventually it has to be restored. Yeah. And that no longer is necessary. Interesting. Well, that says it all, really. Let me, let me shift and just ask you a little bit about the carpet cleaning community. What's been happening in, in the sector? And are there fewer contractors out there now? Seems like during this recession and endless, uh, endless uh, comeback from this recession that there are fewer of every kind of business out there. Is that true for the contracting community and the cleaning business? Yes, fewer. Uh, a business of... Uh, uh, say medium-sized building service contractors, for example, do a lot of the, uh, corporate type cleaning and, and whatnot. Um, their business has been off anywhere from 40 to 60 percent. And the good ones have survived. Others have been caught up in consolidation. Uh, uh, for example, uh, you have uh, here in Whitfield County, uh, a cleaning contractor from Chattanooga that does all the schools, Whitfield County schools, uh, SM, uh, uh, those are the initials of them, I've forgotten the name. Well, now they're ABM, ABM being worldwide, recently bought up, and I that's see. what's been happening. I see. And that's happening all over the country. Yes. And I suppose that's a healthier move, or in terms of quality, it hasn't changed everything all that much, would you say? Uh, difficult. Uh, quality with the large cleaning contractors is uh, difficult when it comes to the carpet. Um, Everybody is keyed to uh, efficacy and the, and the equipment and the systems for hard surface because all the soil shows now so it's it's you don't have to have a magnifying glass to, yeah. for the building owner to know if that hard surface or that marble or that vinyl or whatever is is uh, been properly cared for or not carpet on the other hand has this wonderful capability of holding soil and hiding it where it occurs so they can let it go, they think. And there hasn't been enough attention paid to treating it instantly and effectively. And this is where deep cleaning during daily or weekly or quarterly activities, depending on where the soil is accumulating, is going to change the industry. Well, because it. we can pay attention in terms of, of effectiveness uh, in these areas that uh, uh, don't show the soil on carpet like they would on hard surface, but the soil is accumulating it's, there right. nonetheless. Everybody knows that, but they haven't known what to do about it. I've heard people in the industry distinguish between cleaning, which I'll define as removing dirt, and having carpet appear clean. Do you find that in... Yes. What's that all about? Well, that's where you get in the interim. They call it appearance management. That's one of the difficulties with the, the interim concept. I'm not arguing against it anymore. Bless that argument. It's okay. And I would deal with it. But um, it, it's that uh, we'll manage the appearance by hiding the soil 
down deeper into the pile and, and until the buildup is such that we need to restore it. So um, you have the appearance of clean, but you haven't had deep cleaning effectively. And so okay. we want to move to deep cleaning daily. I see. So we have maintenance now, I should call it deep cleaning maintenance. I see, I see. Well, a lot of it is semantics, it would almost seem. Yeah. I mean, interim is, a, is not a great word. Conceptually, the whole idea isn't a bad one, but that's just not descriptive enough, it seems that, to me. Yeah, conceptually uh, useful, uh, difficult in, yeah. in the application. Yeah. For, for the most part, would you say carpets are getting cleaner now than they were 10 years ago? No. Uh, in general, um, you have, uh, uh, see, it depends. If you have a totally trashed carpet, such as we're dealing with currently in, in here in Dalton, then the answer is counterintuitive, which is the dirtier the carpet, the more it needs dry extraction rather than wet extraction, and that, that is just a reverse of the thinking. So if it is wet extracted mostly, and, they, and it's thought that we well, have a truck mount, $50,000 uh, piece of equipment, cleaning plant on wheels, it's going to be better. Not necessarily the case. And it has, it has to do with technology, not brand names. I see. I see. That, that's, I'd rather not answer it so parochially, uh, but there's a lot out there uh, that's thought to be known about soil control that's really not so. And gradually, we need to overcome that. I see. Get rid of some of the folklore. I see. Interesting point. Let me ask you, you're beginning a project. You had referred to it a minute ago here in Dalton. Tell us about that project. Ah, Valley Point Elementary School. That actually is a and j, &J project in conjunction with Valley Point Elementary. Valley Point being part of the Whitfield County School District, not the Dalton City School District. Uh, it's an elementary school, obviously. Uh, carpet's been down 13 years. After it, was, it was really uglied out uh, after three to five years. And so now it's 13 years old or so. And so it's been eight or 10 years looking pretty much the same. They clean it once a year wet extracted uh, each summer. And according to the Valley Point Elementary people, a week or two later when they go to open school again for the fall term, carpet looks like it did before it was cleaned. And it's, it's the, the buildup of soil is such that it is a mess. And they've given up on it. J and J, uh, decided they wanted to take a, another look at dry extraction. And S Valley Point, in the meantime, has some mover shakers at that school, very capable ladies over there, I must say, uh, who have been uh, pounding the table and on the bullhorns uh, uh, for several years now, more than several, to get that carpet cleaned or replaced. But since everybody had given up on it, and then there's a claim of no budget, uh, nothing's been done. And it's, it's so uh, we ran a, a trial in October, uh, restoring uh, one of the hallways. And then uh, a month or so ago, earlier in December, we did the lobby, restored it from, uh, how do you want to say, a, a, uh, a pig's ear to a silk, silk purse, a sow's ear to a silk purse, yeah. is that the saying? Yeah. Uh, back to pristine. That carpet can go 25 years. Uh, I think I, I know little, I don't know much about the carpet itself, the, the quality, the 
uh, who made it because the school is long since, I guess, forgotten what it is. But uh, yeah, so it's J and J and a Valley Point I elementary see. project that was assigned to us to tackle I and see, see what we could do.